Hey everyone, this is Sean from the Saving Your Future podcast, and today we're going to talk about a little bit more in depth about how the importance of having a rainy day fund. So thanks for joining the Saving Your Future podcast. This podcast is based off the book Saving Your Future by yours truly, and in this podcast we talk about everything related to personal finance from saving for a rainy day, which we'll talk about today, to saving for a home, for a car, and most importantly, saving for your future so you can retire when you want to and have a successful financial plan toward retirement. So today, the reason why I'm going to talk about the idea of a rainy day fund is with the government shutdown, especially in the Washington, D.C. metro area where I live, you see a lot of people that are struggling right now. And the reason for that struggle is that, unfortunately, you know, with being out of work for a short period of time, you know, it's going on a month, actually, many people are just beside themselves on what they can do. And trust me, my heart goes out to these people because it's, it's really not within their control. They didn't expect this government shutdown, and nobody expected it to last this long because it just had never has happened that for, for this extended period of time. That said, when you work for the government, pretty much almost every president has had a shutdown at some period of time. So during every presidency, you know, not to get political and say whether it's a president's fault or not their fault, there have been government shutdowns in almost all the presidencies in modern time. So if you do work for a government contractor or you do work directly for the government, definitely consider once you're back up and, and running that you set up a rainy day fund if you haven't already. The idea is to get to six months worth of expenses. And if anybody has that, then even though it's a tough time right now, the fact is that it's already been signed into law that when the shutdown's over, you're going to get paid for all the time you're not even working. So that's the good news. And I hope people can, you know, take that with a grain of salt because I know that doesn't pay the bills right now. I also know that a lot of banks and a lot of institutions, credit cards and such, they all understand this and they're willing to work with you. So reach out to whoever your creditor is and see what you can do. See what they're able to do as far as deferring payments and things like that. Also, I know that many people, um, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. If you need to get some support and help, there's a lot of food pantries and so on that will be able to provide you with support. So I hope that's helpful. But what this really does underscore is the importance of setting yourself up for a rainy day. And so this could happen to any of us. Let's imagine that, forget about being in the government, but let's imagine that you lose your job. You didn't expect it. It just comes out of nowhere. Maybe there's a downsizing in the company. Maybe your performance hasn't been that good, but you really thought you can turn it around. And now, unfortunately, you know, you have a week, two weeks, whatever it is. You will get unemployment in most cases, and I think not you know, understanding this scenario that as, as much whether or not people are eligible for unemployment that are uh, furloughed right now, and that might be another thing to look at. But what's the difference? What's the gap between what unemployment will pay and what you need in order to pay your bills? Do you have a mortgage? Can you afford to pay that mortgage for six months if you weren't getting paid? Because even if you lose your job, does that mean that tomorrow you'll be able to get another job? Well, the economy is pretty well doing pretty well right now and there are tons of jobs more jobs than most people uh, than there are people to fill them but even with that depending on your skill set you may be in a situation where it'll take you longer to find a job than it might take somebody else so or you may be holding out for the best position and that could take some time because you don't want to just jump into anything and maybe create a setback in your career so what you want to do is you know, hold out, be able to wait a little bit longer and, you know, have those funds aside to cover that difference, to cover the bills that you need. So how much, I'd like to hear from people, how much do you have currently saved? Have you considered putting a rainy day fund together? And where would you put that? It's sometimes good to just have it in the bank account. Maybe you can work with your bank to, you know, prepay your mortgage and just have that money prepaid as a credit toward you or, you know, maybe set up a scenario, say, hey, what would happen if I were in a particular position where I couldn't pay for a particular period of time? Where would that put me? That might be worth finding out. Credit cards, can you pay down your credit card debt so that you're not in a situation where if something were to go wrong, you have extensive credit card debt to take care of? 
what would you do in those particular situations? Well, one of the keys is to make sure you're living within your means, clearly. Because if you're living within your means, then you'll have a little bit more money aside to be able to put away for the rainy day funds. So look at some of my other podcast episodes where I talk about ways to potentially save <coughs> to potentially save money and take that extra money that you're saving and put it toward that rainy day fund. Put it aside so that if, God forbid, you do need that money, it's going to be there to protect you. Don't get in a situation where you're up against a potential foreclosure or being put out of your apartment or derailing all the other things that are important to your financial success. A rainy day fund or at least a investment that you can tap at a short period of notice is super vital to anybody that needs to create a financial plan that's going to allow for success going forward. Any of us at any time could be without a job. If you're a business owner, you own your own business, there could be a downturn in the particular product or service that you're selling, and that too could put you at a disadvantage, put you in a situation where you would need some tappable income. Are there other skill sets that you can do while you're in this down situation? So with a government shutdown, can you maybe in bad weather shovel driveways? Could you look for short-term service projects that you can do? Um, you know, is are there other hobbies or other things in your uh, that you can potentially pick up some money doing? Is there potentially an opportunity to sell certain assets that you have? You know, hey, maybe I have a prized product that I own. Maybe just looking around where I am right now, do I need to sell some of my podcasting microphones? Do I have a camera that I can sell? Maybe the big screen TV, whatever it is. Potentially, the items that you need to sell can help pay for the short-term shortage that you're in currently. So hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, and we will see you in the next one.